And if you're thinking that you don't need one of these five things when it comes to self-defense because your stand game is so good, no one will ever be able to take you to the ground, I'm sorry to inform you of this. You're not a fighter. You're a gambler. The art of fighting without fighting? Show me some of it. Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing the six attributes that a martial arts style must have to be considered a complete self-defense art. Before we go any further in this video, I would like to remind you to hit that like button and click the subscribe button and the bell button to help this channel grow. Our channel is all about helping people rethink self-defense by addressing the commonly held misconceptions on the subject. And one of the greatest misunderstandings that I've noticed is a lot of people have a hard time differentiating between a self-defense technique and a street fighting technique. One of my most popular videos is a tier list in which I rank various martial arts in their effectiveness at teaching someone how to protect themselves in a self-defense scenario. Not only is it one of my highest viewed, it's also one of my most commented on videos. And one of the most common comments I get is something to the tune of, martial arts style A can beat up martial arts style B. Therefore, martial arts style A is better for self-defense. And whereas that is a good base, it is not entirely true. There are a lot of martial arts that are specifically designed to fight against other martial artists. These are what we call combat sports. And generally speaking, combat sports is a excellent base for self-defense. I'd go as far to say that if you don't study a combat sport, you are not prepared for self-defense. How on earth can you understand what it feels like to be hit and keep moving forward if you've never been hit? or what it feels like to have someone slam you to the ground if no one's ever done it to you before. There's an old boxing saying that says everyone has a plan until they get punched, and it's pretty much true. But just because a combat sport is effective at fighting other arts doesn't necessarily mean it's the complete and total package when it comes to learning how to protect yourself. If an art has really good punches, like boxing, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to prepare you to deal with the variety of other attacks you may come across. Because if you've squared up with someone in a fight, you are not defending yourself. What you are experiencing is what we call a street fight. A street fight is when two people have agreed to fight each other. Whereas a self-defense situation is when one person doesn't want to fight and they have violence unexpectedly thrust upon them. So for example, if you are a 130 pound woman, how well does boxing prepare you for someone to grab you from behind and throw you on the ground? I can't stress enough, we are not talking about two people who've agreed to fight on the streets. I'm not talking about a bar fight. I'm not talking about a fight in a prison. I'm talking about one person attacks somebody else. The key is you can't ignore any one given aspect of self-defense if you are trying to study it realistically. To say that Muay Thai can beat up X, Y, or Z art is ignoring maybe some of the advantages that art may have in situations in which Muay Thai has no answer. So what's a good mental examination to see if an art is well-rounded enough to call itself a self-defense system? Well, it kind of boils down to five or six checkpoints. The first is gonna be that the art has to incorporate stand. That's punches, kicks, knees, elbows, and footwork. Secondly, the art needs to incorporate clinch techniques. That's more knees, more elbows, but also the dirty stuff like pulling hair, eye gouging, head butts. But more importantly, it really needs to have a deep understanding of throws. If you don't wanna to go to the ground, you better know how to take someone to the ground because it's the move that you don't know that usually gets you. Third is it has to have a good ground game. And I'm not talking about giving it lip service. It needs to be an excellent ground game. If you aren't rolling at the level of a blue belt or purple belt in jujitsu, or maybe a high school wrestler, then you really aren't fully prepared to grapple with someone who's bigger and stronger than you. And don't give me any of that stuff about how we're not supposed to go to the ground. To me, not learning ground fighting is the equivalent to a pilot not learning how to crash land. Sure, I don't wanna to go to the ground, but that doesn't mean I ignore that very important phase of the total fight. The fourth thing that you have to incorporate is weapons training, both defense and use. That's going to include sticks, knives, and even firearm training. 
It is inexcusable for a self-defense instructor not to know his way around a gun. Even if you're anti-gun, even if you live in a place where maybe guns aren't legal, that doesn't mean the bad guy won't have one, and you better know how to handle it safely so that you can stay safe. Remember that familiarity breeds confidence. The fifth bullet point is a well-rounded skill at situational awareness and de-escalation, what I call the art of fighting without fighting. I've studied under way too many martial arts instructors who are phenomenal fighters, but who would have no idea how to talk their way out of a fight, or how to take someone who is irate and calm them down. That's a good way to check if what you are studying truly is well-rounded, but then there's also this sixth piece over here. I really think this is kind of what separates the boys from the men when it comes to self-defense systems. And that's a self-defense technique has to work against someone who is bigger and stronger than you. There's a lot of techniques that I enjoy, but I've also seen a lot of techniques work really well for me and not work so hot for somebody who's a lot smaller than me. And whereas I may like those techniques, I wouldn't dare call them self-defense because it's just not gonna work for a smaller person. And please don't forget that right at the start of this video, I put a big emphasis on how important it is to actually spar regularly, to be a part of the competitive aspect of martial arts. Because doing all of that stuff I just said, but never actually practicing it, would the, be the equivalent of someone teaching you how to swim, but never getting you in the water. And so sure, maybe a boxer could beat the crap out of somebody who does say Kali, but that's not a self-defense situation that is a street fight. And just because something wins street fights doesn't necessarily mean it's good self-defense. And if you're thinking that you don't need one of these five things when it comes to self-defense because your stand game is so good, no one will ever be able to take you to the ground, I'm sorry to inform you of this, you're not a fighter, you're a gambler. You're placing a bet that you won't come across the guy who can take you down, or that you won't be attacked from an angle in which you can't defend the takedown. I'm a big fan of martial arts and I've been in the martial arts world for about 25 years and I would love to know how your martial art that you study holds up to that checklist. Now there's going to be some people who may comment on this video having not watched the whole thing, so include the word toasty in your response to me if you actually made it to the end of the video. And if you did make it to the end of the video, you clearly enjoyed this content, so hit that like button and click the subscribe and bell button so that you know whenever we're coming out with yet another video. Also, if you live in the Indianapolis area and you'd like to come train with me, all the information you need to get signed up is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. Furthermore, if you are living too far away and you'd like to train with me via Zoom, the information you need for that is also on the website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.